Hi friends, we're live. I am so excited to be here. Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well. And I'm really excited for today's live stream. I have a lot of really great things to share today. If this is your first time uh, enjoying the live stream with me, hello, my name is Lisa Hetrick from Indigo Jade Art. I am very excited that you're here today and I'm so grateful that you're taking the time to be with us for our live stream today. If you are checking out the live stream on the replay, hello and welcome, and I'm so grateful that you're here as well. So I have a lot of really fun things that I'm going to be sharing today. We're focusing on no line watercoloring with Distress Inks, which is a dye-based ink. And I'm gonna get into a lot of really rich details for our tutorial today. And um, yeah, you can ask some questions along the way. So if you have questions, feel free to put them down in the comments and I will answer them as we go along. This has been, this has been working for the live stream, so I'm kind of excited about that. I love to be able to answer the questions live and in real time, so that's kind of fun. Nancy, hi, welcome. I hope you're well. Um, and I'm excited to see people starting to pop in and I know that it's um, all of my Maryland friends. It's a little bit of a rainy, dreary day here, but that's okay. We've got lots of fun things that I'm gonna be sharing that are gonna bring a little bit more color and a little bit more joy into your life. So before we get started and we head down to our project cam for today, I'm gonna start with a couple of announcements um, and sharing some things I would like to share with you. I have uh, a couple things this week I had a brand new card tutorial that I launched onto my YouTube channel. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click over to the screen share just to, um, to share that with you. Let's go ahead and a little bit. Hi, Joanne from Cold and Windy Rochester. I'm sorry, I hear you though. It's cold, windy, rainy Maryland right now. Okay, so I'm heading over to my screen share real quick to share that I have a brand new card tutorial this week. If you haven't had a chance to take a peek at it, you uh, as we head into the weekend and you're looking for inspiration, brand new card tutorial, this wildflower wreath in washi washi watercolor. It's always about the washi watercolor, isn't it? Always. So just wanted to share that with you that brand new card tutorial on my YouTube channel this week. And also the, um, the freebie that I'm going to be sharing today is the link is in the description. If you are a subscriber to my email list, you've already gotten this freebie and you can, you might be painting along with me today or using the techniques that I'm going to share today and paint it afterwards. So that freebie is there. The link is in the description and I will um, go ahead and show you what that looks like as well. So here is when you subscribe to my email list, um, just know that I usually send an email out once a week and it is chock full of lots of good things, usually a brand new tutorial, some freebies and some updates of that's going on in the shop. If you sign on, to, sign up to my email list, you can get that freebie immediately, what we're gonna be doing today. And you also get a free art print. So very exciting. So, and I love, love my email community. I have a lot of things that I share in that community that I don't share on my blog or in my social media channels. So just some really special things for my subscriber community. So, okay, those are just the announcements to kind of get us started for today. And um, I just wanna thank you again for being here. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I just wanna send you into your weekend with a lot of inspiration to help you craft your joy. I totally believe with everything that I have that when you take the time to do something with your hands, you change, you can change the course of your day and it is the ultimate in self-care, ultimate in self-care. 
I know that when I paint or when I'm creating, it becomes a very meditative process. I'm able to really disconnect from my day or things that might be bothering me or going on. And it really brings me joy. So that's why I'm here. It's my superpower to teach. It's my superpower to break things down into simple, simple, um, simple tasks and simple techniques so that you can apply them to your projects. So very excited. So why don't we go ahead and get started and head down to our project camp. I'm not going to lie. Today's tutorial is jammy jam packed. So I'm going to try to keep us within the hour. I don't want to go over, um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay. So let's head down to our project cam here. Super, super fun. And again, if you have questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask. And I've got a little bit of a light shift going on here. Again, rainy day in Maryland. So, you know, we're working it out. Okay. Now, I want to share today. Today's tutorial is all about no-line watercoloring for paper crafting. And I've got a little bit of a twist that I'm going to be sharing. And last week, last week, the request from our audience was to focus on distress inks. So last week I talked about a lot of different watercolor mediums and markers and things that you can use to, to watercolor for paper craft. This week we're just gonna dive a little bit deeper and talk about our distress inks. Distress inks are water-based mediums. They're very reactive with water. And lots of dye-based inks are reactive with water. You see me using the Gina K dye inks a lot. I'm going to be using these today just because we're going to change it up a little bit and use something different from my, from our stash. So before we get into the project, so here is the free flower project that's in the download. So um, <laughs> thank you, Joanne. It's okay if you go over. Thank you. You know, sometimes I get talking and, you know, I kind of just keep going. So it might happen. So here is the freebie flower that's in the download that you um, you can get. It's the Blooming with Joy note card coloring project. And if you were with me last week, I talked about it a little bit as well. So I just um, wanted to focus on it a little bit more this week. Oops. And just talk about painting those petals. Now, before we get into no lime water coloring, and here's another example of some no lime water coloring. I've got two different samples here and I'm going to share this because there's a difference in the effects that you'll get based on the medium that you use for your no lime water coloring. So this no lime water coloring of another flower was done with a watercolor set, a pan set, so paints. So the colors are different. I'm going to bring them up a little bit so that you can see it's it's very beautiful there's a lot of texture the colors are vibrant but they are different when we use dye based inks when we're using our inks the colors tend to be a little bit more what i call electra electric or a little bit more um, glowy and fluorescent now we can achieve big time glowy effects with watercolor paints, but when we're using our dye inks, which we all have because we're paper crafters and you know we make a lot of cards and different paper crafting projects, I like to be able to push our supplies and our mediums a little bit further. So that's why we're gonna talk about distress inks today. So I just wanted to show that example. Now, one of the, th one of the reasons why no line watercoloring is so hard or it feels kind of hard, who's with me on that, right? Is because our stamped images tend to be small. So we've got areas and surfaces in here that we're trying to get in and little crevices and nooks and crannies, but our stamps are really small images. So it can feel a little bit challenging. Um, so that's why today for our tutorial, I kind I brought this image in to an A2 size card, and I'm going to show you how to paint each petal individually so that you can get these kinds of effects. But 
ultimately, some of our stamped images aren't really that big. So today's technique is going to focus on stamps, and you could also utilize this technique for digital images. Now, I want to bring in like a big floral. This is a big floral stamp called Friendship Flower from Gina Kay. This is a really, really pretty stamp. It's got lots of different petals and petals that come forward, petals that go backward, and a lot of overlapping of petals. So that's what we're going to cover in here um, with the coloring today. But the issue with sometimes with our stamps is that there's a lot of detail. First of all, sometimes our stamps are really small, so you might have a flower that's an inch by an inch, you know, like in my in my stamp set here. Um, it's kind of, it's a beautiful little bouquet of flowers, but they're kind of small. Or you might get a big honking flower that feels like it's going to take you hours and hours to stamp. So the key with stamps that have a lot of detail that are bigger and have a lot of detail is to look at the petals individually and not look at all of the etched in details that have been provided to you by the illustrator because all of the etched in details are going to derail you when it comes time to watercolor them okay they're going to derail you if you're trying to work around it if you're trying to work within it it's going to derail you a little bit so, okay, two things with our no line watercoloring. When we're taking our stamped image and we're stamping it down onto our watercolor paper, you need to use an ink that's watercolor friendly or that's going to disappear when you start the watercoloring process. Here are my two favorite inks from Gina K. These are amalgam inks. Her amalgam ink line is specifically made for uh, wet mediums. It's permanent. So it's specifically made for watercoloring and for using other, um, other mediums for no line watercoloring. These are my two favorites to use. We've got the Barely There and the Whisper. So here's why I like these two. If I'm going to do something with a color palette that's cool. Hi, Colleen. Can't find the photo to download. Okay, so the in the description for today's video, there is a link. You might need to hit the more button so that you can see the whole description. There's a link for, it's a bit.ly link for today's download. I'll also follow up afterwards so I can make sure that you get that. Um, okay, so back to the amalgam inks, Whisper and Barely There. If I'm working with a color palette that's cool, I'm going to use Whisper so that I can make sure when I stamp that. Um, <laughs> thank you, Joanne. <laughs> yes. It's also in the email. So that went out this week to subscribers. So with cool, with the cool colors, I'm going to use Whisper because the cool colors are going to eventually blend in really well with the Whisper. With my warmer colors, like if I'm using warmer colors of ink or paint, I'm going to use the Barely There. Now there's lots of different um, inks on the market that can help you do that no line watercoloring. You can also use your Distress Inks because Distress Inks are water reactive. So if I was going to be doing a purple, a pink flower, and I knew I was going to be using this picked raspberry, which I'm going to be today. I could use, I could stamp my whole image in this picked raspberry. And then as I begin my watercoloring, those outer edges of the stamp are going to fade away. Okay, I hope, I hope that makes good sense. Now I'm going to dive in uh, to the watercoloring today. Okay, so here is the sample that I that I did. So I've got picked raspberry, festive berries, mustard seed, and pine needles. So we're, I'm going to dive into watercoloring this image and I'm going, probably only going to get to a couple petals to show you the technique so that you can apply that to your either digital images or your stamped images. But before we get started on any of the painting, I have to talk about water ratios, okay? 
So the ratio of water to the ink makes a huge, huge difference. Nancy, yes, have I tried the Ink on 3 Fade Out ink? I have, I love it, it's great. Um, I currently, it's currently in the special place in my office, in my studio. It has kind of disappeared. I put it away in the special place. You know, we all have that special place where we put things and we forget where we put them. That's where it is right now. So I'm hoping that it will reveal itself soon so that I can use it again. Okay. All right. So coming back to, um, <laughs> yes, Nancy, it did. It faded out, right? Like what it's supposed to do. It's a fade out ink. So that's kind of funny. Okay. So, um, and Joanne, if I fade in and out, it could be like the internet connection on both sides. Just know that it will come clear. I can see things really clearly on this side, but hey, we're live streaming. So sometimes it happens. So hopefully it will improve. Okay, back to the water ratios. So I wanna talk about water ratios with water coloring with any medium or with your distress inks. So, because you could use, easily use one color to color your whole flower and you would be able to get different values of that color by just using water. So when we take, now I took festive berries here for this sample. When I take festive berries and I put it down on my mat here and I add a ton of water to it. So I'm really, really watering it down and I paint it down. I'll get a consistency like skim milk. So we see a little bit of that color and we get, it's beautiful, isn't it? That corally like pink. We get a really nice light um, value of that color. And that is the color that we're shooting for when we first start painting. If I'm at, then I can go in, if I add just a little bit less water, if I put my festive berries down and add less water and I have more dye, I get a consistency of like 2%, so 2% milk. So it's like a, it's a stronger value of that color. And then this is whole milk, this is full strength. So if I put my Distress Ink Festive Berries down here and I only add a little bit of water and I'm painting it straight onto my um, watercolor paper and I get the strongest full strength value of the color. And between this, Val these three values, I'm able to create some variation in my petal. Okay, it's important to talk about water ratios and how we use the water and the ink because that's how we can change the values of the color and we can stretch this one ink so far. We can push it to give us so many different kinds of colors. Okay. All righty. We're going to dive in. We are going to dive in. I've been talking long enough. We're going to dive into the actual painting and just kind of show you my no line watercoloring technique. Now there are, there are tons of videos on YouTube. There are tons of people that do no line watercoloring. It is a process that requires quite a bit of patience, especially when you have a big uh, stamped image like this, you're really taking, you're taking it petal by petal. So there's lots of different ways to do it. And I've done it a lot of different ways, but today we're going to focus on taking, approaching our stamped image one petal at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is now you could use either color, festive berries or picked raspberry. Picked raspberry is a gorgeous color. So you can see in here in the three uh, swatches that I did of these colors when we're at full strength and we add more water so we're changing the values. Picked raspberry is nice but it tends to not give me some uh, variety in its value of color. So I'm going to go ahead and use festive berries today. I like festive berries. It's very um, kind of got a little coral look and feel to it. Uh, it's just a really nice color, really, really nice color. So I'm gonna go ahead and t show you 
the water ratios of that color. And I'm going to paint this whole flower in this one color. All right, we're going to start off at full strength. So I've got my, I've got a brush and I have some water. You can see that I'm adding water to this dye. The dye, the distress inks are water reactive, so they're going to move. So you can use the dye, the ring inkers, the same way that I'm using the distress inks here. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of paint that into this block. So I can get a really nice full strength value of that color. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Love it. Okay. So now I'm going to take, I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to add some more water to this. So I'm just going to add just a little bit more water. So essentially I am watering it down. Nancy, thank you so much for asking that question. And Nancy just asked, what paper am I using today? And I can't believe I didn't tell you guys. So I am using the Arteza 100% cotton paper. Okay. And last, the last live stream we did, we really, really talked about the different kinds of watercolor paper. Um, that I like to use. I prefer 100% cotton because it can take a lot of water. I also brought in that Canson that we talked about last week, the Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, now, I will tell you that the Canson watercolor paper, this isn't 100% cotton, but if I am going to do, which I'm just going to paint a little bit of this color on here. The issue with painting washi watercolor on the Canson is that it stays like on the surface. This is a wood pulp paper, so it's not fibrous. So the, the, the dye, the watercolor, the water, it doesn't seep in and spread as much as it would over here. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint in my, um, I need to add a little bit more to this because I've watered that down a little bit too much. I want to show you my 2% milk. And I'm going to show you that 100% cotton versus that wood pulp Canson paper. I'm adding a little bit of water to this. Just watering it down a little bit. Not too much like I kind of overdid it. So I'm getting a stronger value of color here. So full strength, skim milk. So here's my skim milk. No, 2% milk, sorry. Full strength, 2% milk. Here's my 2% milk over here on the Canson wood pulp. So there's a difference between these two papers. The color sits on top. Look how e I'm, I'm easily moving it around and it's just kind of it's kind of tough to work with. So some of our best, uh, there's a huge difference between these two papers. We get a lot more of our color values coming forward on our 100% cotton versus our wood pulp Canson papers. Now this is just, it's a great paper, but you have to know that if you want to do these techniques, you just have to work a little bit harder and you have to work, um, work harder harder for this paper so yes 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 okay all right now I'm going to show you I'm going to add a little bit more water to what I got here to my mix here and I'm going to go down to my skim milk so I'm adding a ton of water breaking down that dye if you were using watercolor paints you would be breaking down that pigment and then I am painting my skim milk on here so I'm able to get those different values. So to be, to be able to do that with your paper, with your ink, you're just adding water. The more water you add, the more you're able to get a lighter value. So here's my light value over on my Canson. Hi, Merla. Nice to see you. So here's my issue with the Canson. Everything just sits up on top and it just takes me a little longer to get the values that I want. So we're a little bit, this was skim milk. You can always, and that's dried. You can always, if you have Canson, you can always go back in 
and you can add a little bit more on top but you can see it just kind of moves on top and it doesn't dry right away it just doesn't seep into the fibers of the paper so that's the difference um, between these two and I'm not saying that you shouldn't give Canson a try it's very affordable just know that you have to work a little bit harder to get the to get the values and the techniques that you want I just really enjoy using 100% cotton papers. I like that Arteza brand. I like the B Paper Company brand that we talked about last week. They're just really um, great papers to work with and they are affordable. So, okay. All right, so I'm gonna get into, start to get into the no line watercoloring with the festive berries and painting one petal at a time and just show you how I do it between the three values. So I'm going to put some festive berries down. Now I start each petal looking at each petal individually. So I pick which petal I'm going to start and I don't always work on petals right next to each other when I'm working around the flower. So I might start at the top and then the bottom and then go side to side and then just kind of work my way around. But I'm first going to start, I'm going to paint this whole petal with one color and then I'm going to add a little bit of that mustard seed in the end. I'm taking the festive berries and I am watering it down significantly to skim milk, to a, to a water ratio of skim milk. Now a good way to test if you have the value you want is just to grab another piece of paper and I'm digging that I'm liking that got that nice little peachy peachy color so I'm gonna pick this up and I just have I have a Princeton Neptune just use your favorite brush that you like this is a small one a number four comes to a nice tip just allows me to get into those crevices you could also use a water brush and you might see me going back and forth to the water brush so I'm gonna work on this petal first and I'm going to start from the top down. So what I usually do is I don't spend a ton of time thinking about where the sun is, right? Where is the sun hitting this petal? Where are my shadows? Where would things lie? If you are interested in doing that, that's going to give you some nice realistic effects. I just don't do it. Um, I used to, but you could it could take you like two hours to color this thing. So, and it doesn't bring me joy, so I don't do it, right? So I start, usually what I do is I start with all of my darker values at the top and then I draw them down. But here, what we're gonna do is we're working light to dark and we're gonna dry in between and we're gonna add layers of color on top of each other to get that uh, different variety of the strength for the no line watercoloring. Okay, so I'm going to start up here, and I'm just dropping in a little bit. I'm just following my lines here, and I am going right up to the edge of my lines because eventually they're going to disappear. And I've dropped in a little bit of color. I'm cleaning my brush, and then I'm going to pull this color, what I have, I'm going to pull it down. So this first layer is really what we call the underpainting. So I've got that first layer of color. I might just want to add a little bit more to give me the shape of the petal. And this is called the underpainting layer. And now I'm going in still with skim milk and I'm going to drop in a little bit at the top. And now I'm doing a little bit of layering or glazing. Now technically with glazing you should let it all dry in between but the technique that we're doing here the paper is dry, the brush is wet, the ink is wet, we're working wet into dry. So we have a little bit you can see that it's still kind of wet and instead of thinking about painting in brush strokes, right, Instead of thinking that way with the no line watercolor technique, think of, think of it as using your brush and your ink to stain your paper. 
okay? So you can see I'm grabbing a little bit more color and I'm just going to drop it into that top, let the water do its thing, and I'm not stroking it with the brush in any way, you know, trying to achieve it with brush strokes. I am just dropping in the color and staining the paper. Okay? And then we can just draw a little bit down. Now, if I wanted to, if I felt like this was getting a little bit too much color here, it's wet, I would clean my brush off. I could pull away some of that color by just with a wet brush. You can see how I can pull some of that away and get some of those whites of the paper back. So I've got that layer of underpainting. Colleen, yes, stroking is what you do wrong. So it's it's an, a natural thing for us to just think, I've got my paintbrush, I've got my paint. I'm just going to go back and forth and back and forth. So if we just take a moment and we just kind of reshape that thinking a little bit to paintbrush, ink, water, and I'm just going to stain, drop it in and stain those edges. And that's how I'm going to get my color into my petal or into my stamped image. Then you're going to change and reshape the way you do no, no line watercoloring. Now I'm going to go ahead. I want this to be dry because I'm going to go in next with my 2% milk on this petal. So it's going to get a little loud for a second. I'm going to go ahead and take my heat tool and just dry it. It was pretty dry to begin with. But I want it to be really, really dry. Now that is the key for creating that variation of value and color. You want your stamped image to be completely dry before you start to apply the second color or the second layer of color. Now you could change colors if you wanted. You could try all those different things, but I'm sticking with one color because if you learn how to do the no line watercoloring and change the values of your color, with one color, you can do it with multiple colors. And that's kind of how I believe, that's how I teach and that's kind of what I believe with my techniques is that if you learn how to do the technique in its simplest form, you can experiment and push your supplies further and apply it with other, you know, experiment with other color options. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got festive berries in our skim milk version on this petal. Now I'm going to go ahead and take festive berries and put it down on my craft mat again. And this time I'm going to add some water to it, but I'm not going to water it down so much like I did with the skim milk. So I want to test it on a piece of paper. And I feel like I've got some variety between these two. So that's a little bit 2% milky. I like it. I think I'd like it to be a little bit darker, but I'm going to work with it. Okay. So I'm going to go back in. Now my paper is wet. Is drying between the specific? Ah, good question, Nancy. Is Nancy just asked, is drying in between letter, le letters, excuse me, layers specific to dye inks, or do you do that with watercolor paint as well? Yes, the answer is yes, I do it with watercolor paint as well. The technique is called glazing with what we're doing. And you can, it's not specific to dye inks, it's not specific to paint. Um, I use it across all of water based mediums. When you let the image dry, either let it dry or you force it to dry with your heat tool. When you add the next layer on top, which is what we're getting ready to do, it the transparency of the color underneath is going to come through and you're creating layers of color. It's very much like um, Copics, Nancy. It's very transparent. And yes, you're going to dry in between and that's how you get the glow with the color, the transparent colors. Our, water, our distress inks are transparent. They're water, water reactive and water-based mediums. Now the distress oxides, and I should have brought some of the oxides in, they're pigment. 
So they are, they have more opacity in them. They have more opaque qualities to them. So these are great to use for watercoloring our paper crafting projects. Any dye based ink that you can get reactive, reactivated or reanimated with water are perfect for that. So I kind of just nerded out there a little bit. I just totally went watercolor nerdo on you. Okay. It happens. All right, so I have my 2% milk, and I'm going to go in and, again, start from the top of this petal. And instead of taking, brush stroking it in, I'm just going to drop some of this in. Now, my brush is wet. My, the, the brush is wet. The paint or the dye ink is wet. But... The paper is dry. So I dropped a little bit at the top. I'm cleaning off my brush. And now I'm gonna draw what we have. I'm gonna work with what I have. My brush is wet, my paper is dry, and I'm gonna pull it down, okay? And I'm not pulling it all the way down to the center here because I want some of that skim milk color to stay where it is. now. When you're working from layer to layer with these inks, the layer underneath, once I've dried it, is not gonna reanimate or reactivate. It's gonna stay. Sometimes watercolors will reanimate and reactivate, but I wanna keep that variation of color there. So I'm starting to get a little bit of some different values here in my color. Now at that top, I wanna come back in and I want to just add a little bit more. Brush is a little bit wet here. I'm going to add a little bit more to that top. And you notice that I just kind of work at the top and I work my way around. And while I'm doing that, you can see that that petal is starting, the outer edge of the petal is starting to disappear. Okay. This is, Festive Berries is a cool, corally like color can kind of skew warm a little bit, but it's a little more on the cool side. My ink on this paper is cool. So it is definitely not, the, the lines are not easy to see. Okay, so I'm gonna let that layer dry again. I'm probably gonna have to force it to dry. That's probably what's gonna have to happen. And then I'm gonna get my heat tool here because it is a little bit wet. I'm going to dry that. Okay. Digging it. Liking it. Like some of that variety of color I'm getting there. I've got these two happening. I've got 2% milk and I have skim milk going in that petal. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add my darkest value, my whole milk value of the festive berries. So you can see that I'm getting that reanimated there, but I don't, it's not washy washy. It's not super watery. I've got a lot of that dye on the tip of this brush. My brush is wet, my paper is dry. And then I'm just going to just drop it in. And we've got a lot of color there. Clean off my brush in between. It's still wet. And I'm gonna draw that down and around. But I'm not going to come all the way down. I'm just going to gently, with water, blend it. Just My brush is wet, but not sopping wet. It's just wet enough to be able to reanimate that color and move it. And I'm not going to pull it all the way down. I'm going to let that color so that we can see that color variation there. I am digging that. And here's the other thing. When you don't try to get a smoothie, smoothie blend of all these colors, back to what Colleen was saying, if I, if I don't try to stroke, use my brush to stroke this out and make this smoothie, smoothie blend, when it dries, you get all of these different watercolor pools or bleeds and blends, and that adds extra texture to your petal. Oh, love it. 
Nancy just said, I don't see any buckling of the paper from the water. Is that because it's 100% cotton? Yes. It's also because we are controlling the amount of water that we're applying to this paper. So I didn't hit my whole paper with water first and worked wet brush into wet. I'm working with a wet brush, wet color medium into dry paper. So I'm not getting that buckling because we are really controlling the flow of the watercolor ratio. So we are really controlling the water. And this, my friends, is the whole reason why people feel intimidated by watercolor because they feel like they can't control where the medium goes, where the watercolor goes. You can, and this is how we do it. It's based on how much water you add to your paint or your dye ink or how much water is on your paper. So if you want to have a tighter control on your paper crafting project, on your stamped image, you're not going to be doing washy-washy. You're not going to be throwing down a ton of water first and then trying to paint it in because it's just going to go. Watercolor and watercolor mediums are just going to go where the water is. So that's how you can control it a little bit more. So the paper's not buckling, and I don't have it taped down. I just have it marked for an A2-sized card. And then I want to show you, everybody, look at how that's dried. And we've got that nice different texture going in here. So we're getting those watercolor effects in that texture. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so this is super dry because I kind of nerded out again and talked my way through that um, a little bit more. Now, I want to show you a way to jack up the intensity by adding in the second color. So I have mustard seed here. And I've got this petal, and oh my gosh, I really like it. So if I was going to move on and start to paint all of my other petals in my, in my piece here, I would go one at a time. So you can see that I've gone one at a time with each one of these petals. And what that does is that gives you more of that illusion of the 3D effect. You've got petals that are coming forward and petals that are going backwards. And one thing I want to share is when you have, if I started to paint this petal next to it, so when I'm painting petals that are next to each other, we want to make sure, or one way to tell the difference between this petal coming forward and this petal going backward is changing the value of the color next to it. So this petal is pretty dark right here. So I've got a really nice saturation whole milk saturation of color here. When I go to paint this petal, I know that up against it, I'm going to be more of uh, skin milk. I'm going to have my color be more of skin milk next to it so that I can get that variation of the two petals, the one petal coming forward and the other petal going backward. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes good sense. So now we've done this glazing technique, right? We've taken our festive berries. We've gone from whole milk, actually skim milk, to 2% milk, to whole milk by building up our color from light to dark to get that nice variety of uh, value in that petal. Now I'm going to show you what it's like as a finishing technique to just kind of jack up the intensity and the glow of that color. So I've got a little bit of mustard seed here. Now, one of my favorite things to do with flowers in the end is to add a little bit, a little touch of yellow. Now, this mustard seed is intense, okay? So I'm gonna water it down quite a bit. If I went at it with some super duper full strength, I would just kind of overpower it because these dye inks are pretty intense, but I just love them. How many people love the dye inks? Please put in the comments. How many people love the Distress Inks? They've been around a long time. We've all been using them a really long time, and I just love them. Okay. I would say the Distress Inks and the Gina K Inks give me the, the brightest values of color that I want to achieve. So I've got this mustard seed, and I'm going to go ahead 
and pop a little bit of that yellow in there. And you can see that I, instead of brush stroking it in, I just kind of popped it in to that center. And it adds just a little touch. Yeah, Nancy does, Joanne does, yes. It adds a little bit of that touch of yellow. I'm bringing this a little closer. I'm gonna drop a little bit more in there. You can see me adding that yellow. Colleen says you're learning to love them, especially the oxides. Oh, I should probably do a tutorial on the oxides. I love the oxides too. Holy smokes, they do some really fun things. But look at this yellow. So that yellow popped on top of that festive berries just kinds of sh changes the whole value of the way that petal looks. We've got lights. We've got darks and we've got that beautiful, beautiful little finishing pop of joy, little finishing pop of bright color. Here's like, a, here's another example of how I've used yellow. Now this was done with watercolor paints, same technique that we've done here today, just one petal at a time. And I added yellow at the end as a finishing technique. Oh, just love it. Yellow is such a joyful color, such a color. If you can add yellow into your day, it is a happy, happy day, in my opinion. And I just nerded out again about color. Merla just said distress inks. I use them a lot on different techniques. I know. I just love them. Love them, love them. I just love being able to take your inks or the supplies that we have in our paper crafting stash and push them like unicorns and make them do amazing things. So again, I've just gotten really nerdy today on our watercolor chat. Um, okay, so here is, I'm just popping back in and just showing you the yellow. Now in the end here, you know, I did a little, I kind of splashed the yellow in at the end and then splash some of that blue in around it to just get those real washy washy effects. If you've been following me for a while, all of my watercolor is washy washy. Um, so doing these more controlled like projects really push me and challenge me, especially with our flowers. But it never seems to amaze me that I always end up throwing a little bit of washy washy effects in it because I really like that look and feel. Love it. Okay. All right. Colleen said, when I found Copics, everything else went to the sideline. I hear you. I'm a Copic girl too. I just, I just love, I find watercolor and using our mediums uh, to create watercolor effects just feel really meditative to me and are very, very joyful. So that's why I enjoy them so much. The beautiful thing about Copics is that they have that feeling of watercolor because you can do that as layering and all that transparent um, qualities that you can get with them. Nancy's in here today watching. She's a Copic queen. She does some amazing no line watercoloring with Copic markers. And the other thing about Copic markers is that it's, you know, it's a marker. So we feel like we have a lot more control because we're using our hands in a way that we're very familiar, right? Like writing. So, um, you know, sometimes when you're using a brush, it doesn't feel that way. So, but you can really kind of get used to using your brush in a very um, natural way like you would a pen or a marker. Okay. Oh, so Colleen just asked, I was just getting ready to ask if anybody had any questions. When you do the background with the distress ink, do you um, spread it after it dries? Yes. Very good question. And I actually will just show you how I would do that. So, and I'll do a little bit right here. So I'm going to take some of this salty ocean. I'm going to spread this down here. Now, this is still a little bit wet. I would make sure that the whole thing is dry first because it's going to bleed anyway. So if it's wet, it's going to bleed into what you're working on and it's going to bleed anyway. And because the distress inks are water reactive, they are going to bleed a little bit. But I like to preserve what I've done with my puddle and make sure it's dry. So that's kind of, that's nice and dry. Now I'm going to go back in 
I would probably use a bigger brush, but I'm going to go in here. I'm going to drop some water around it. You can see I've already reactivated it. I'm going to drop some water around it and it's starting to move a little bit. I will go around the whole petal, all the petal, the whole flower, make the whole thing wet. Get your background color, probably at a 2% milk ratio, and then just start dropping it in and letting it do its thing. Now around the edge of the petal, it's going to mix with that festive berries and it's going to become more, we're going to get some purples. So I'm really just kind of letting that background be really super wet. Got lost in the water there for a minute. Super wet and I'm just kind of pushing it out. So a little bit of that dye ink can go a long way. Digging it. Like it. And I like the way it's blended. And now you could dry this in between and drop more in. Or you can just keep dropping it in while it's wet. And you can see the more you drop in, the more intense the value is going to be in that background. Okay. <laughs> Joanne just says I'm Copic Challenge too. I think that you're not Copic Challenge, Joanne. I think that it all just takes a little bit of practice. And the more we play with our supplies and the more that we push them, the more that they will respond to what we're doing and the more joy we feel because we're actually doing something with our hands and we're playing and having fun with our supplies. Ah, does watercolor, um, Nancy just asked, does watercolor paint reactivate like that or would it stay in place? It will reactivate. Watercolor paint will reactivate. The only medium that won't reactivate if you're doing this technique is um, like an acrylic ink, like a Liquitex or an uh, acrylic gouache, anything that has like acrylic in it. Also inks. So if you're using any India inks for your projects, they, once they're on here, they're on here. They're not going to reanimate. That's what, that's why watercolor artists like to use them as a finishing thing because they're permanent. So you can do all kinds of things on top of it. So I hope that answered your question, Nancy. Oh, I just, I'm digging. We've already been talking for almost an hour. And yes, Joanne, there are so many fun things to play with. I'm going to pop back on to the screen. And if anybody had any more questions, that's fantastic. We can just go ahead and answer them. If you have questions later on, once you've gotten started or once you've downloaded the flower or you've taken your stamped image and you started to um, do some no line watercoloring, don't hesitate to come back, pop them in the comments. I'm happy to go in and answer them. Also, you can always direct message me. Many people do direct message me, ask me a quick question. I'm totally happy to help. That's why I'm here. That's my superpower, right? So, oh, uh, Joanne said, Lisa, could you explore brushes sometimes? Well, yes, I could. Yes, Joanne, I totally could. Thank you, Colleen. So sweet of you to say. Um, very nice comment. Thank you for telling me I look good today. Thank you. Um, it is Maryland. It is raining. It is gray. And I'm trying to bring a little joy and bring a little yellow into the day. So, Joanne, the fun thing about brushos, whoosh, they are intense. And I really enjoy using them for a lot of different, like, splattery-like techniques. But, yes, I can bring that into a future tutorial. Thank you for the idea. Nancy said... Could you show how you would do the center of the flower? Well, sure. I totally didn't do that, did I? Let's pop back in. Let's pop back to the project cam, and I'm going to show you how I did the center of this flower um, real quick. So I use mustard seed for the center of the flower. I'm going to pop that down here. Now the center, like I said, with our stamped images, a lot of times our centers have a lot of detail in them. And you need to resist 
the urge to try to paint each one of those little, little petals in the center, right? Because that's just not going to happen. It's a lot of detail. You would be there with a magnifying glass for hours trying to make that happen. So what I like to do is my, my um, paper is dry, my brush is wet, I add a little bit of color, a little bit of water to the color. I'm definitely getting that whole milk status there, right? Whole milk value, that color. And then I just start dropping in the color using the tip of my brush, dropping in the color, and concentrating those drops pretty close to each other. You could even kind of drop some into your petals. But at whole milk value, okay? And they're going to bleed together a little bit. And then I'll let them just kind of do their thing. So what's happening is, is that the dye is kind of encapsulated into the little droplets. And when it dries, you get that, you get that texture, textured look of the center of a flower. But all of those colors, when they dry, when the mustard seed dries, it's encapsulated into that uh, puddle of water and we get that nice whole circular kind of like a little dot there. So that's what I tend to do. And then I might go back in afterwards and use a white gel pen or even a black and just drop in little drops there to create that center. I just make sure that I try to resist the urge to try to paint each little center. So I'm looking at the shape of the stamped image and I look at each petal and I try to look at the stamped image without all the details that the illustrator has given you inside the petals and just look at, as, look at it as its simple shape. So with our flowers, we have the petal, really super simple shape. And then the inside of the flower often has all of these different details. I just look at it as one single shape and I just kind of drop in color to create that abstract illusion of the center of the flower. So I hope that helps. Yes. Great. Thank you, Nancy. I'm so glad that made sense. It's kind of a cheater way to do it, but I've never ever taken the time to try to go in and paint each petal. They're very small. It's sometimes our stamped images. That's a pretty large stamped image. But sometimes our stamped images, right, are like one inch, two inches. You know, our big flowers are really huge. And you might have that opportunity to go into the center of each petal of like a peony or something like that. But in this one, we didn't. And the little drops work just great. And I like the idea of it being a little bit abstract and a little instead of always feeling like a realistic kind of thing so okay oh i am so grateful that everybody could join me today i had so much fun next week i have a fun live stream my next week i'm going to do the live stream again 11 30 on friday next week is the 15th on friday and i'm planning on coming in to talk about watercolor pencils and using them in your paper crafting projects, how to use them and the different ways that we can use them. So I have three big different ways that I use watercolor pencils and I can't wait to share it with you and a lot of different varieties of color pencils. So I will get a little bit nerdy with art supplies and talk about the different watercolor pencils and kind of what they do. And then I'm also just going to take a deeper dive in how to use them in our paper crafting projects. So I hope you will join me. That's next Friday at 1130. I want to wish happy Mother's Day to all of my mamas that have joined us today and all of the mamas that are listening in on the replay. And if you didn't get a chance to download today's project, if you're an email subscriber, you've already gotten this project in your email. Um, and that is this little guy right here, the Bloom with Joy coloring project. This is the actual, oops, here we go, the actual Bloom that we did today. So the, um, 
you can head on over to my website at indigojadeart.com and hit the subscribe button. You'll also get a free art print, something designed by me. Um, if you are not a subscriber, you'll get both. So it's kind of a bonus. If you are a subscriber, you have gotten that and many other things this week. So I hope you will join me. And again, I'm so grateful that everyone could join me today. I just love doing this. So if you need more inspiration heading into your weekend, don't forget you can head on over to my YouTube channel. I have a ton of craft your joy card making tutorials. So many, so much joy. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, Colleen said, can you send the email again? Yes, of course I can. And I, yeah, I'll make sure that you get that, Colleen. I know that you did subscribe. So I'll make sure that you get that right after um, the live stream today. And Merla, thank you for the kind words about the live stream. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. And I will see you next week.